Welcome to Ms Art Consultancy Homeschool Art Sessions. This week I'm going to be sharing with you some really interesting techniques about how to add a lovely background to your double page in preparation for adding biro drawings to, like you can see here. Now I'm going to be teaching you a range of different biro techniques, a range of different patterns that you can draw, but before we do any of that we need to get our page prepared. And by prepared, I mean by adding lots of lovely colours using a few different simple watercolour techniques, as you can see in the background here. And I'm also going to show you some other really interesting ways of presenting your sketchbook in preparation for drawing onto. I hope that you enjoy. Now, the first thing that I'd like to show you, this double page here, is you can actually rip numerous pages. So I've actually ripped three pages here to create a nice dynamic double page in which that I could write behind if I wanted to um, or add more colour to. The other thing I'd like to show you is how you can actually print on tracing paper. Um, here the title says developing your sketchbook. Um, stick it between two pages like I've done here to give the illusion of one page and then just carry on working on your page as normal. One of the other techniques on this page is I've used salt with watercolour. Um, where the paint dries, the salt absorbs the liquid, leaving quite a nice pattern on the page. And also, as we've spoken about before, I've used some interesting typography to create a nice title. Another example of how you can create a nice background before you start drawing is this one here, where I've used watercolours and I've also used a little bit of collaging. I've collaged some little bits of glitter and little bits of paper. Um, it was quite tricky to draw then on top of, but it did create a really nice textured background. Here's another example of how you can print on tracing paper um, to create quite a nice, um, interesting part of your page. I've then collaged around it. Um, it's just about exploring really how you can create a background to then draw upon. Another thing you can do is you can actually cut bits out of your page. So not only could we create a watercolour background um, in preparation to draw upon, we could um, cut bits out of it or create a whole different shape page altogether. Um, who says the page needs to be a full size? You can always rip your page into a different shape as long as it's still joining in the middle, um, in the middle fold, then you'll be absolutely fine with that. You won't lose the page. Another thing you can do to create a nice base is you can do marbling, which includes ink and water. That's quite a complicated technique and I'll be showing you more about that in one of my later videos. So hopefully some of those images have given you some ideas or inspiration about how you could create a really nice base, um, an interesting base on which to draw upon. And now I'm going to be showing you some simple watercolour techniques um, that you could add to your page as well. So first of all, choose your colour. Um, we're going to be using watercolour and I'm going to start with blue this week. Now you can either use a normal paintbrush or you can use one of the paintbrushes that I'm using here that's filled with water um, in the stem. Now the first thing I'm going to show you is basically you create a big puddle of paint on your page and you allow it to drip in any direction you like. It can drip down. If you blow it, um, if you blow the paint, if you get quite close and you blow it, the paint will actually spread in different directions. You can even use a hairdryer on the page as well. And it can create like a spider-like effect with all the paint flying off in different directions and leaving little trails, little drips as they go. You might want to put down some newspaper or an old sheet to collect any of the um, excess paints that might drip off of your page. Now this is supposed to be quite a fun and quite a messy activity and um, you may notice that during this fun and messy activity you do get paint everywhere so maybe don't wear the nicest of your clothes as well when you're doing it. Now one thing I want to be clear about when you're adding a wash to your page, this is what we're doing here, we're adding a background wash, you don't want your paint to be particularly thick, you want the paint to be quite thin um, so we're going to be using quite a lot of water, we want it to be quite watered down. The second little tip, if you like, of a, of a way you can make the watercolour look interesting is you create a water puddle first, like you just saw, and then you add bits of paint to your watercolour puddles and watch as it disperses through the wet page. It almost looks like a feathery effect um, as it spreads through the, um, as the paint spreads through the water. Now I'm mixing that, te that technique here with also adding some more drips to the page. 
I quite like how the drips look on the page, but I also love the ethereal feel of when the paint starts to feather throughout. It looks almost like a cloud where it's all feathery around the edge. Now the paint obviously is very, very wet. I'm using quite a lot of water here. Um, be mindful about how much water you're using and how much water the page can take. And what I mean by that is, if your paper is quite thin, it won't be able to absorb as much water. And you'll know when it's at its limit because the paper will start to bobble. If that starts to happen, just move on to a separate um, piece of paper in your sketchbook, um, a separate space if you like. You don't need to go onto a separate page. And you can save it, just leave it to dry and um, you can always paint on top of it again. But if the paper does start to bobble, it's the paper telling you that it can't absorb any more water. Now, you can paint normally. And when I say normally, I mean by using simple um, horizontal or vertical brush strokes like I'm using here. But it doesn't look that interesting, does it? We want the background to be interesting, which is why I showed you those videos at the beginning. Um, lots of bright colours, how you can collage, how you can rip the page, how you can cut shapes out of the page. To make an interesting double page, an interesting page in your sketchbook, the background is of utmost importance, especially when doing fiery drawings like this. So I think I've used enough blue now and I'm going to go in with some yellows. I wouldn't use more than maybe three colours, three or four colours on your background, otherwise it could look a little bit too busy. But you know, if you want to explore that, then by all means do. I just prefer using a smaller colour palette when I'm creating a background. So um, that's just my advice. But again, feel free to explore what it looks like using more. There is no right or wrong way of doing this. The, the idea is this week is to just have a beautifully filled double page with lots of colour where you've tried a few different techniques, such as this technique here, where we're allowing the paint to drip down the page um, or how you can splatter some paint on the page, as you can see in some areas here. This is my finished double page. So you can see I've just got yellow, blue and some red dotted through there. There are some um, drip marks. You can see there are some of the puddles that I spoke to you about where you create a puddle and you add the watercolour. And I've also splatted some paint on the page as well, which is where you get some paint on the end of your paintbrush and you slightly tap the end of your paintbrush to allow a little bit of paint splatter to go onto the page. Um, Try not to paint in a pattern because the patterns are what we're going to be adding with our biros next week. This week, just add your paint layer like you have here. Now, if you're looking at it and you think, oh, I'm not really that happy with it. It's filled. I filled the page, but it could be brighter or I wanted to add a different colour. By all means, do just wait for your first layer to dry first. So once you have filled the double page, wait for that to dry and then you can always add some more paint to it afterwards if you want to. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. I can't wait to share with you how we're going to develop this double page into something really interesting next week with all of our pattern work. Please feel free to share your videos. I've seen some of them and they're just fantastic. Thank you for taking part and I will see you soon. Bye.